I'm gonna leave the, <laughs> the floor to the real comedian with that bad joke out of the way. You've seen her in the WTF show. So now put your hands. She's also right on the beginning of the cruise with our uh, uh, Welcome Aboard Showtime. Put your hands together for Vanessa Hollingshead, the resident comedian. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. How are you? Good? Good mood? It's a nice little, uh, it's a nice stage. Everyone have a good time on the, uh, on the island? Yeah. Be sunbathing? Yeah. So where, where's everyone from? We have, where's the New Yorkers? We got a lot of New Yorkers. Because okay. New Yorkers stare at you. So you're like, make me laugh because my rent's too expensive and I've seen it all. What about New Jersey? Yeah. Okay, same thing. We're just separated by a tunnel and no sales tax. Okay, what about, do we have any people visiting from like overseas, like different countries? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where? California. Who's from England? Well, welcome. I love the Brits. What do you think about, what do you think about America? You like this place? It's fantastic, right? <laughs> no, I'm half English, half Russian. This half English, pale skin, no tits, alcoholism. And this half Russian, I could actually break a man's head with my legs in alcoholism. I got the baby in the field, pick the potatoes, drink the vodka. What's with the lights? We got the lights up now? Okay, all right, so I went to, and the English, England is very sexy. It got the very sexy accent. Everyone loved the British accent, isn't it? It's hot, right? An English guy could be like, Vanessa, I'm all out of toilet paper. Didn't perhaps you sort of come into the bath and wipe my ass? I'm like, yeah, let's go. But they got the weird shows, like next on BBC One at 1700 hours, how to build a ladder. <laughs> you could never show like that here with our attention span of three seconds. You're like, what, how to build a ladder? That'd be built by a bunch of little people. That'd be built by a bunch of Playboy bunnies uh, with the tits and ass hanging out as they're walking up that ladder. That'd be built by a bunch of crackheads. They go to the top of the roof, no crack, they jump off and die. Now that'd be a show, right? It's like, no, the ladder was built by the Sultan's Apprentice in 2000, because they watched the thing, okay? Because that's what you do. You've got a lot of it. Is it. Are you visiting here? Are you here on holiday? You are? How's the food? It's a lot, right? And a lot, how many people are happy about Meghan Markle? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, how awesome is that? Boy, that's no enthusiasm. So we get some, do, get some uh, different blood in the royal family, you <laughs> know. I mean, they're famous for sleeping with each other. I watch Game of Thrones, I know what's going on. I see the crown. And I'm telling you, they, they, I, I blame the weather. You know, because uh, I, 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 this is what I think. You know, I was supposed to have a date with Lady Anne of Norwich, but it's just pissing with rain. I, just as well stay in and screw my sister. You know. <laughs> the moment he wants to go, oh, okay. So we have anyone else visiting from anywhere? Just England? No one, no other Brits? That's it? Nothing. Okay, good. Okay, so I live in Chelsea. I live in the safest area of New York if you're a woman because everyone is gay. I'm telling you, I could be drunk and naked. Someone would find me. Be like, oh my God, we've got to get you home and you need to do crunches. <laughs> and after this sh uh, trip, I need to do some crunches. Anybody? I'm eating for like a small starving village. Oh my God. It's, I can't stop at the soft ice cream. I'm like Mrs. Softy at this point. You know, I just keep going and going and going. And, uh, and in New York, I've noticed like a lot. And, and I'll tell you one thing. The trans in New York are starting to look hot, really. You ever look? I'm like, man, I got to start dressing up more. They're really looking good. I mean, women, we only dress on occasions, but these trans men, they look stunning every day. And you got the trans liquid, the trans neutral, the transparent. What the fuck is that, right? I'm starting to feel translucent. I'm just blending into the gayness. And I try and be open-minded. Only in New York can you look at somebody and go, is that a man? Is that a woman? Well, I guess I'll find out later on tonight. You know, I try and... Uh... This actually happened. I saw a man and a woman making out in my neighborhood. I'm like, they're not from around these parts. They better take that hanky-panky uptown. 
And I was in Whole Foods. A lot of women in New York are getting thin. It's not for a fashion statement. It's no one can afford the prices of Whole Foods. <laughs> right? It's getting insane to eat healthy. I was in Whole Foods. I saw a woman that was so thin that her ribs were sticking out of her back. Like, oh my God. I want to be that thin. Okay, so I got to them. I'm not healthy. So I followed her around. She had fat-free salad dressing, fat-free muffins. Then I noticed she had boxes of x lax Like, she's an anorexic. And then I saw she had a cucumber. I'm like... And she's lonely, too. <laughs> I should have opened with that joke. You guys are sick. I had no idea. Gave you the benefit of the doubt. So is everyone drinking? We got a lot of drinkers here. Drink? Yeah. What was the drink package? Anyone get the drink? If you don't get the drink, what was that, $800? $800, what, $300 for the internet? I could have bought a computer and a case of wine for that. And the, and the cruise right back home. How much did you pay for your drink package, sir? A lot, right? I hope you drink. I would have to be drunk to buy that then. And let me tell you, I like to drink. Let me, how many people like to drink? Let me put it this way. My friends tried so many interventions with me, I just used to leave the plastic folding chairs set up in a semicircle in my apartment when they came over. And they were getting a little concerned. They're like, Vanessa, you're turning into a blackout drinker. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm turning into a time traveler. <laughs> Do we really need to know everything as long as we get from A to B? I mean, one minute I'm having white wine spritzes with you. The next minute I'm in Australia explaining to the customs official why I have no underwear and no passport. <laughs> I know how to say where are my panties in 18 different languages. Ou la pantaloon, el medan des panties. Miku, Shishi, you get the idea, okay? That's Chinese, that's Mandarin. But sometimes you gotta drink, right? Life throws you a few curveballs, right? Anyone drink on the job? Do we have any nurses, any doctors, any teachers? Anyone have a job? The way I see it is if Ernest Hemingway can write Old Man in the Sea completely trash, surely you could grade a term paper, check a dep deposition, give a needle with a light buzz on. It's just degrees. I mean, if you're one of these violent types, it's like, I'm going to take these little fucking bastards and I'm going to throw them out the window. Don't drink, okay? Or if you're one of these sad saps, I didn't want to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a poet. You know, don't drink red, red wine. Now, a couple tips for those of us who like to juice on the job, and I'm not talking about kale juice unless there's vodka in it. Okay. If you think you're slurring a little, you're slurring a lot. And if you think you're slurring a lot, you're not even speaking English. <laughs> Did you ever blast the same song at 3 a.m. over and over and over again, thinking the neighbors won't mind because it's such a kick-ass song? I'm like, come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me, lad. <laughs> Luckily, when the cops showed up, they liked sticks, too. <laughs> So like, we're gonna sail away right over the 32nd precinct, sweetheart, and you can take your CD with you. Now, I wasn't always like that. I used to have a glass of wine with dinner after my husband left me bottle of wine for breakfast. Like, I'm all out of fruit juice, it's fruit and it's juice. My friends were like, Vanessa, you're turning into an alcoholic. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm turning into a French woman. They put that away. You ever been to France? You ever see the way those French women drink? You know, she said, for breakfast, there's two bottles of wine, really. <laughs> and then for lunch, there's a four pack of cigarettes, you know, to keep thin. And then for dinner, have the baguette that soak up the wine to don't drop over my clothes. <laughs> and in the morning, I'm so hungover, but I have to look nice. So I put the jean on and the dress over the jean and the jacket over the dress. And voila, coat of fashion, la, 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 la. Now, a couple other tips. When you come back from your liquid lunch, you're going to want to give advice because you're going to be drunk. You know how you drink and you're like, you know, you should do, don't, don't, don't. Make sure you're not, make sure you say yup because you'll be slurring. So you have a nice lunch, yup. You know, we got a meeting in 45 minutes, yup. So what'd you have for lunch, yup. Make sure you're leaning up against the wall. You don't want to be leaning up against your cubicle. You'll fall right through. Yeah, okay. And make sure you don't come on to the FedEx guy. I don't care if he looks like Denzel Washington or Brad Pitt. 
Don't be like, that's a nice package and I'm not talking about delivery. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And also, it makes 250 references in the Bible for red wine, not one for a Sprite. <laughs> Jesus didn't do a shout out for Java juice. My friends are like, you're not Jesus. I'm like, I can drink like him. Maybe I'll get a vision. Maybe you'll say, Vanessa, my child, I want you to walk amongst the lepers. And I'll be like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to work on carnival. Oh, come on, you know that's a shitty ship. Stop that. Stop. How many people are glad you're on Norwegian? Yeah. I mean, I have friends on carnival. They're just my Facebook friends. Now, everyone's on Facebook, right? I don't care if the Russians or the Chinese know everything about me. I can't stop. Have you ever noticed, do you, have you noticed that your email is completely clogged up with ridiculous Facebook threads of people you don't even know? Right. Like Jeannie yeah. became friends with Michael, Sarah wants you to join Candy Crush, Dan thought your wall post was awesome. I'm so busy updating my fake posts to Sam Facebook friends, I don't even have time for my real friends. <laughs> and are these your real friends? You drink too much? You think Tina T who thought your wall post was awesome, you think she's gonna pick your drunk ass up? I don't think so. But your drunk friend Stan of 30 years, he'll be over there if you make sure that you give him a, something to drink. And then Twitter, everyone tweets. Who tweets? You, you, you girls tweet? You tweet, right? You tweet, it's all right. Anyone tweet? Snapchat? Tweeters? Do you tweet? Do you read? Okay. I mean, I, I love animals and I hate that bird and I'm an animal lover. What's a retweet? What's a hashtag? Will it get me high? Will it help me forget about my life? They keep saying that Americans have ADD. I don't think we have ADD. I think we have information overload. How many yeah. people are, how many, yeah. right? Yeah. How much information can we absorb in one day? I mean, first of all, you got Hype, you got Skype, you got Ping, you got Pong, you got Flickr, you got Blogger, you got Hulu, you got Rootu, you got Instagram, you got Spotify, you got Vine, you got Tumblr, you got ticker tape, but you're trying to keep track of news shows. Then you got news shows in three separate categories. And then when you're right in the middle of a show you like, they got those little guys starting dancing to tell you the next goddamn show. <laughs> How stupid do they think we are? They should legalize methamphetamine so we could keep up with all the information. We'd be thin and we'd have no teeth, but that's all right, because New Yorkers never fucking smile anyway. Thank you. And, and, this, and how many people went on this cruise to like just chill out, to reconnect, to read a book that you didn't download, a book made out of paper, right? To get close to your family. They got more crap for us to do on this ship than Oprah's intern, for Christ's sake. You got, you know, cool, uh, you know, cool jazz, hot saunas, uh, swim with the dolphins, swim with yourself, run with the wolves, you know, roll with the punches. Jesus Christ, booze and food, more booze and food, zip line, more wine. I can't say, and you know why? Because they know that we can't slow down. Do you, do you, would you relax? You do? Okay, thank you for messing that joke up. Okay, well, now you, you definitely, you look like you're in a state of relaxation, okay? I have a hard time relaxing. Anyone have a hard time relaxing? Because we're Americans. We cram, we try, we cram as much as we can into a 24 hour period as humanly possible, right? right? I mean, first of all, if you're an American man, you get married. After years of marriage, you eventually trade your wife in for, the, for like a thinner, younger version of the same original wife. Just like a car, you like the mileage, you like the model, but not the mileage. Then if you're an American woman, you can't get fat in this country. You have six kids and a gut, you gotta get that sucked in. You have any cellulite, you gotta get that sucked out. You have any lines on your forehead, you gotta get that Botox on your lunch hour because you don't have that kind of fucking time. Let me tell you, it gets you, right? So you take the Prozac and the Effexor and the Xanax, then you're at that, and you're still depressed, and then you're at the gym. Why is my ass high and hard like J-Lo? Why isn't my life working? And you end up taking these soy protein blend shit shakes which taste like day-old semen and regret donuts. Yeah. So we come here to chill out. You know what, the only show that makes me actually feel better about myself is horrible is Intervention, okay? I used to watch that show drinking, thinking, I'm not that bad, okay? <laughs> Remember the mom? The mom, they were always getting down on the mom and then the mom started drinking mouthwash. I'm like, wow, things you learn, okay? <laughs> and then right after Intervention, because they know every addict is watching the show, they got Hoarders. How awesome is Hoarders? Oh, yeah. 
I used to feel neat watching hoarders. Yeah. The woman's like, yeah, no, I like to sleep standing up and I've got books here and papers here and dolls. I've got a whole room filled with Tupperware. I've got 80 pet rats, they're named Mike, they're my friends. You know, when Hornies came on, I didn't even care about the crackheads. You know what they ought to do? They ought to take the crackheads from intervention and just stick them on hoarders and go underneath this pile of papers is some crack. What? Where's the vacuum? Let's clean this crap up. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Be like the blinds helping the blind. You know, those hoarder specialists purposely make those poor hoarders feel worse than they already feel, right? It's like, well, wh well why, did you, why do you have a room full of Tupperware? Well, when my husband left me, I was making, I was putting away the, the food, the leftovers in the Tupperware. Okay, so. Now, has anyone here ever had an intervention? Anybody? Where did I lose you? Okay. Let me tell you, I have, and interventions are fun. Yeah. No, an intervention is like a really bad surprise birthday party. I come home, friends and family I haven't seen in years. I'm like, oh my God, Frankie, Denise, Jackie, yeah, rock on, yeah. Hey, where's the booze? Where's the birthday cake? Where's the balloons? My friends are like, we're a little bit concerned with your drinking. I'm like, I'm a little bit concerned with your 90 pound weight gain, Jackie. I don't say anything. I'm a little bit concerned, Frank, with the four packs of cigarettes you're chain smoking, you can barely breathe. I'm a little bit concerned, Denise, that your $95,000 in credit card debt since Dan left you 10 years ago, you've got the worst plastic surgery I've ever seen that I actually have to drink now to look at your nose job. I don't say anything. My friends are like, well, we think that your drinking is affecting your work. Like, look at what I do. I tell jokes to people who drink, right? I'm not steering the ship. I'm not doing LASIK eye surgery. I'm not flying a plane. So now, all of a sudden, this isn't a bad birthday party. This is a terrorist attack. I feel like a little Israeli boy that landed in an ISIS cave. Luckily, I'm equipped with an arsenal of functioning alcoholics in my head. I'm like, okay, Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners, you remember that? One of the greatest sitcoms in all time history. He was completely drunk, lived to be 71. Great show. What about Alfred Hitchcock? Rear window, the bird, psycho, welcome to the Alfred Hitchcock hour. Completely drunk on champagne lunches. Ben Kingsley, he did Gandhi. Be the change you want to be in the world. Was drunk shooting the whole time, got shipped off to treatment, and the day he finished, and he ended up winning an Oscar. And my all-time favorite, Winston Churchill. He rallied all of England, defeated Hitler and the Nazis, flask of brandy by his side, morning, noon, and night. He didn't go, you know that Hitler, he's a beastly chap. I think he wants to kill everybody. But oh dear, I'm gonna be dreadfully late for my alcoholism and all this meal. <laughs> I told my friends, I said, make alcohol your friend. I said, Denise, you wanna lose a little weight? Mix Slim Fast with vodka. That weight comes flying the fuck off, I'm telling you. <laughs> you ever lift weights drunk? Man, you could lift. I'm lifting like the janitor up. And he's like, Mommy, put me down. I'm like, but stay off the stairmaster. I did crack my chin open, but you know, I didn't know that you couldn't wear like a, you know, heels and a gown. <laughs> I told Frank, I said, mix it up a little bit. Little Marlboro Light, little Miller Light, okay? And I told my friend Jackie, make alcohol the most important thing in your life. And then you won't care about things like looking good, <laughs> bathing, being employed. My friends are like, but don't you want to live long? No. How many people want to live long? You want to live long? Yes. I want to live fully, right? We got to do crazy things. Do you do crazy things? You're going to do a crazy thing while you're on the ship? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, you, you look a little, you look a little wild. You're going to do something crazy? Let's, let's all die in day six. <laughs> oh, this is a depressed guy. Let's all die on demand. Why live? Let's just fucking jump overboard, right? Right? We'll just all die together, right? Boy, you're positive. What, anti what antidepressants are you taking? Okay. No, we gotta do crazy things. Like I wanna see a really cute guy and I wanna go, yo, bitch, you're mine. I'm single, ladies. Yeah. Well, you gotta be a little bit more positive because you're gonna be single and dead, okay? <laughs> We'd like you alive. 
But we gotta do crazy things. Like I wanna laugh with old friends, I wanna cry at old movies. You know what I wanna do? I wanna go to Central Park, I wanna unleash all the carriage horses, and I wanna blast the stones. Wow, wow, horses couldn't drag me away. And before I die, I wanna take off all my clothes, I wanna go to airport security, and I wanna say, can you see the bomb now, motherfucker? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And alcohol makes that happen. No, the reason I had to stop drinking wasn't the friends, it was the drunk dialing, the drunk texting, anyone? You ever do something stupid? And, and that stays forever. It's like, listen, I know we broke up three years ago. I didn't mean to burn your apartment down. I was making meatloaf, your favorite. Anyway, I need you to know something really important. I'm naked, and I'm in the middle of airport security. <laughs> that and a pair of handcuffs. Okay, usually sobers you up. But part of it, but I'm like the straight daughter of hippie parents. Anyone get high with the parents? One? Who? Is that the depressed guy? Oh, the girl. You get high with your parents? Which, where is, are they here? They're probably high. They're in Cal Colorado, right? What? They're in New York getting high? Like, you have a good time. Okay. No, it's like this growing up. Finish your homework, I'll give you the roach. I'm like, no, Mom, you keep it. I just want a candy bar like the other kids. She's like, candy's got so much sugar in it. Try one of my hashish brownies, the sugar-free. I used to save those for the teachers because I was failing every subject except art. <laughs> Thank you for getting that. Now, my dad was English. He wasn't into pot. He was into acid, LSD, psilocybin, blue blood, or purple haze, right? You get the picture. So we used to go on family trips together without ever leaving home. So, I don't have childhood memories. I have flashbacks. You should have seen it, yeah. You should have seen the vacation pictures from the living room. I think that's why I travel so much because we never went anywhere. Now I went on, now my dad used to keep 5,000 hits of LSD in a mayonnaise jar in a sugar base. I'm coming home from school, I'm watching Popeye the Sailor Man, I'm making a bologna sandwich with the mayonnaise, I'm eating it. The next thing I see, Popeye's hand comes out of the TV set, free ups my sandwich. I'm like, what episode is this? And with my mom, I went, uh, my mom wanted to go on a, a pot march for the legalization of marijuana. They just had one May 5th. So we're at this pop march and she says to me, how come everyone's so disorganized? I'm like, mom, because they're all stoned, maybe if it was a crack march, they'd speed it up, they'd get their vial, they'd stab you and be out of it. And then we ended up moving to bed Brooklyn. I moved there in the 70s. That was, that, it wasn't, there wasn't the gap, there was gangs, right? It was such a rough neighborhood, even, on, even my black friends wouldn't visit me. They're like, mm-mm. And we lived right downstairs from the Black Panther Party, and I used to hear, the white man keeps me down, the white man keeps me down, and that was my mother, okay? It was like a really <laughs> nasty divorce. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Okay. So my mom, like, she wanted to sing in the choir in a Baptist church, something that wouldn't humiliate and embarrass me because she wore her bra over her dress. The drugs didn't affect her, okay? She used to wear a button that said, a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Okay, so real hit at the PTA meeting. So I, go to the, so I go to the Baptist church and I see a painting of the Last Supper and Jesus and all his disciples are black except for Judas, who is white. I thought it was a picture of the temptations with their manager, okay? All true. I just report on my life. And let me tell you, I think weed, I don't smoke weed, I think weed because it makes me paranoid and then I can't stop eating and then I hate myself. That's what, it's not my drug. And I'm telling you, I tried to take acid. You know, I wanted to find God. I was so high, I couldn't even find the kitchen. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. So, I think we, how many people think weed should be made legal? Right? Right? Does anyone have any medical marijuana cards? Oh, now we're all quiet, okay. Well, it's probably gonna, in Jersey it's legal, right? Isn't it kind of legal in Jersey, or almost, or? Almost, you're waiting. You're waiting for that. You're like one, one more day and it'll be free. 
No, I think weed should be made legal. You know why? Because no one gets violent where weed's concerned. The only time I've ever seen any violence where weed's concerned is when someone can't find their weed, right? <laughs> then they get a little nasty. They're like, listen, I'm not addicted. I just need to know where my stuff is. I'm like, all right. And if you had your choice to drive home with someone drunk or stoned, what would you pick? Stone. Stoned, right? You always get home. Drunk, you never know. Drunk, they could, they could be nasty. Could be like, Shut up. Listen. <laughs> If I put my hand over my eye, I see one bridge. <laughs> now, Stone, of course, you always got to listen to your socioeconomic views on stuff, but you always get home. Right? You always like, the world's like really messed up, right? I mean, look at nature, man. Like the trees in the forest, they're different, but they get along. <laughs> Like the pine tree doesn't throw pine cones at the maple tree going, screw you, maple tree, screw you, you're different. <laughs> I'm like, can you turn the ignition on? <laughs> True. Always wind up with the potheads. And you know what I say? Don't put them in jail. Find the right jobs for people that have drug problems. Like, have potheads work at Suicide Hotline. They're always happy. You ever talk to a depressed have pothead? Call Suicide Hotline and they'll be like, hey man, don't die. Like, like, look at your hand, right? It's like art, man, but it's your hand. You ever hear of a pothead trying to hang themselves? I couldn't, like, figure out how to make the news, so I, I just, you know, I'm alive. I'm hungry. Right? That's speed dial. Yeah, speed dial. That's right. Um, and have like uh, crackheads work at Starbucks. Really, they wouldn't eat anything. They'd be good for business. I mean, how slow do people order now? They're like, um, I'll have a grande loaf mochaccino latte with a um, shot of uh, foam and milk. It's like, okay, low foam mochaccino latte. No. <laughs> Six seven five. Six seven seven. Sorry, I can't smile. I got no teeth. And, you know, and they keep they still keep drug testing. I don't understand this. They keep giving like alcohol to pigs, amphetamines to kittens, and cocaine to monkeys. I'm like, why? When so many people would gladly volunteer, right? And you get the good stuff. You know, you ever notice how scientists, they work like 100 hours? I think they're stealing the monkey's cocaine. I don't think that cocaine ever gets to the monkey. I think they're like, Bobo, you enjoy your bananas. I will find a cure for drug addiction tomorrow. It's a little, no one cares. Okay, so, I'm looking at all you people. You're looking good. What do you do? You're welcome. What do you, what do, you do Mr. with the pillow? What's that, your, is that your security pillow or something? Would you bring that from home? Are you friends with this guy? Oh, that's nice. Is this, is this your boyfriend or? It is? Okay. You're not sitting together. Has he embarrassed you? Okay. What's your deal? What do you do, sir? Construction. Construction? Good. It's hot. Can't look at the girls anymore, right? <laughs> no, okay. That's a pity, man. I like compliments. Not anymore with the Me Too and the, you know, Me Too. And, oh, fuck it. You know, I just like, they look at the room, me the wrong way, like a guy's going to get arrested. What are you in for? I told the girl she had nice shoes. <laughs> but at least you got each other, right? How about, uh, what about you two? You two. Where'd you meet? High school, actually. Oh, high school? Oh, everyone met in high school. What about you? You got, that's nice and innocent. Anyone meet online? Tinder? This, this awful site, Grind. You know what Grind is? That's the gay site. You lift up your shirt. Yeah, hot, hot, done. Okay, that's, that's the... Are you dating anybody? What's your deal? Uh, yeah, I've had boyfriend for three years. Okay. Is he here? No. Okay. <laughs> Have a good time. Maybe you could go out with the guy that, before he commits suicide. <laughs> Show him a good time. Maybe you'll give him the reason to live. Because he wants to take all of us with him. I don't think so. Did you ever, now what about you? You seeing anybody? 
You're not? Have you been on, done the online stuff? No, you don't care. Are you in school? You don't even care about anybody. But you just care about yourself. It's all about me, you know? What about you two? What? Are oh, you married? Okay, good. Everyone's like, leave me alone. Just you talk about your sick fucking life, okay? No, I tried Tinder. Let me tell you, I tried Tinder. Anyone ever try that site, Tinder? It sucks. No. It sucks? What, Mr. Construction Guy? You tried it? It sucks. I don't like it, you know. No, Tinder is awful. I'm telling you, it's awful. You swipe, to the, you swipe to the left if you don't like the guy. You swipe to the right if you like the guy. And it looks like an electronic deck of men's faces, right? So I'm doing a lot of this. And after a while, I start to feel evil. I start to feel like the evil Empress Cersei on Game of Thrones. I'm like, die, die, die. Oh, why were you even born? You should be beheaded. Now you, you look like my twin brother. You come to my chamber. <laughs> But you guys are looking good. I'm so glad you don't have the big long beards. I haven't seen a lot. Of, I'm so done. How many people are done with it? Every time I go to Brooklyn, it looks like a bunch of Vikings on a bicycle. All right, I'm so done with the big long beard. I am done. Do I look like I'm on a date and apostle? Like, when did looking like a biblical figure become a hot look? When did this happen? Every time I go to Brooklyn to see my friends, I feel like I crashed the last supper. My ex was growing his hair and his beard, right? I'm on my way to meet him in a restaurant in Brooklyn. He sta everything starts to go in slow motion. He's breaking the bread. He's drinking the wine. I'm like, did I get stabbed on the way over here? Am I having a religious experience? And I hear him say, you're free and I'm Jesus. But what he was really saying is I'm going to get shit-faced. Here's the keys to the Prius, you know, from the designated driver. And I try and be understanding with the beard. Maybe he escaped an insane asylum, right? You got the beard. Maybe you're on the caveman diet. I eat like a caveman, might as well look like a caveman. Maybe you went to India to go find gods, you know, but this long thing, I mean, women, we don't grow armpit hair out, do we ladies, huh? We got the pubes, we got the pubic hair hanging out. We dying that. We'd be a sight on deck 12. Be like, hey, come over here, you Moses looking love God. Why don't you come part the seats? And if you're good, I'll show you my burning bush. Now, come on. I'm like, why is your beard this long? And it had egg in it and a chess piece. You know, with the, him with the board games. And he looks at me and he goes, I get lazy. I'm like, lazy? I'm like, do you know what we do as women just to look good for you? We wax, we tweeze, we pluck, we take Juvederm, Botox, wrestling, we shoot it in all parts of our face, we do that, the little, the little, the lips that look like a duck and look jack. think we can like, we bleach our hair, we bleach our skin, we bleach our anus. Anyone hear of that? Anal bleaching? Wow, let me just add that to my list of shit to do to look good for you. Anal bleaching. We starve ourselves to death so we, that we can have the thigh gap. We take the fat, we get it sucked out of our stomach, back and thighs, we get it sucked into our ass. We get nose jobs, boob jobs, full body jobs, eye lifts, neck lifts, we hold on six jobs, and we'll throw in a couple blow jobs just to pay for this stuff. <laughs> Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> and back in the day, Asian women used to bind their feet so the feet would be the size of a doll's. So if their husband was cruel, they couldn't even get away. They're like, I hope he is good to me. And we would take tapeworms to lose that extra 10, 70 pounds. And it would grow to be six feet. We know it would be six feet because its head would start coming out of our rectum like, hey, get a little cramp back here. Or we'd wear whale bone corsets so that our waist would be 20 inches around in between fainting spells. And you can't pick up a weed racker and hack some of that fucking thing off? Really? Really? You say, you say I don't like the really long beard, okay? I don't mind the, I don't mind the soul patch. I don't mind the five o'clock shadow. And I'm not crazy about the beard I'm, I'm with uh, no mustache. The only person that I loved that had that look was uh, Abraham Lincoln, and they, uh, they shot him in the face and put him on the front of a penny. So. <laughs> so, and relationships, everyone's in relate. Do we have any, we got a few single people, but most of us are in relationships, right? right. And I have figured out why relationships don't work out, and the problem is, and I hate to admit this, is that women analyze and complicate everything. <laughs> we do, right? We do, we do. Yeah, we do. But there's a reason for this. 
because unlike men, we use both sides of our brain. Be very fair. I'm going to be very fair. They did a study. They found out that men have six million more brain cells than women. But they need those six million more brain cells because most of their brain is at the tip of their penis and they would actually fall over and die. So I'm going to be fair. It's like if I ask you guys, so what do you do? What I really mean is I hope you're not unemployed like the last tool I supported because I'll be really pissed off and the relationship will fall apart. When a guy asks, so what do you do? What he means is, will your career interfere with me having sex with you? <laughs> when I ask you guys, so did you get along with your family? What I really mean is, do you hate your mother? Because if you hate your mother, then you're gonna hate me. Then I'm gonna hate myself. Then I'm gonna start starving myself, tying up, dyeing my hair, calling up my girlfriends, and the whole relationship's gonna fall apart. When a guy asks, so did you get along with your family? What he really means is, will your family interfere with me having sex with you? <laughs> When I say to a guy, look, we've got to talk, what I really mean is we've been together for months. I've now twisted my personality into an emotional pretzel to accommodate your every need. I want to know your idea of commitment versus my idea of commitment. Are we getting married? Are we kids? I mean, where is this relationship going? I want to know. <laughs> when a guy says to me, look, we've got to talk, what he really means is I want to have sex with someone else. <laughs> and will this interfere with me having sex with you? Yeah. I kissed a lot of frogs to figure that out, and they turned into toads. So. But actually, I'm in between husbands. Anyone in between husbands? No. no? You know what I want to do? The next guy I meet, I want to make sure that he's uh, rich and I like him. <laughs> because if I like him and he lives to be 100, you know, I like the guy. If he, and if he dies suddenly, I can go grieve in Tuscany. If I'm madly in love with him, I'll be like, oh, I don't care about the money. You know, never love a man so much that you don't care about the money. I'm just saying, need a little perspective, okay? You young people thinking, no, love is love. No, you're not, no, you're sensible, right? What are you studying in school? Medicine. Medicine, when you want to be a doctor? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Can you take it? Yeah. I want to be like a really cool doctor. I want to be a pediatrician for the children. Do you want to be a pediatrician? What do you want to be, plastic surgeon? Trauma. trauma, trauma. People that have been really fucked up, I want to be there and I want to help them. Because that's how I roll people. Well, let me tell you, I just got out of relationships, so you guys have been like, it's been awesome to be here. And uh, you know, and I love accents. My last boyfriend was German. Do we have any Germans here? Good. Because you know how beautiful and romantic that language is. We're newly together, we're in the height of passion, we're making love, and he's really getting excited. He's like, yeah, yeah, ich liebe dich und liebe dich und ich liebe dich und ich liebe dich, ich liebe dich. I felt like it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like, I will intercourse you to death and then I will be back. I will make you cry like a girly man. This, this was not sexy time for me. But my friends loved him because he was so industrious, because he was German. He's like, I noticed that your friend's son does not have a swing set. Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I took all the aluminum from all the beers, I drank this afternoon on, I made a swing set for him, yeah, yeah. I'm like, maybe you're drinking a lot of beer. Nein, I'm German, my body's built like a Brita filter. It goes in as the pure alcohol, comes out as the fresh water. Perhaps you would like to try some. I couldn't make this up if I tried. Then he wanted, and then he was a pothead, because this is what I attract, and he's like, Bob Marley was a pothead, look at all the great music he produced. I'm like, you are nothing like Bob Marley. And yeah, he does songs like Get Up and Stand Up, and you don't do either. <laughs> so he said, I was thinking, let's maybe spice things up in the bedroom. I thought maybe perhaps together we watch the porn, yeah? Now, I'm a good sport, but uh, he liked the, the hardcore porn. Anyone watch the hardcore porn? Because that's, oh, come on, construction guy. What are you doing? Really, stop it. You've probably seen some sick stuff that would make your mother cry, okay? Yeah, there's women, yeah. Women, we watch porn, but we never watch the hardcore. It's silly, like, right, you've seen porn, it's stupid. It's always like some silly storyline, like, uh, well, like the pizza guy showing up with that bad music, like, and he's like, and the woman's like, I wonder why the pizza guy is so late. <laughs> and he's like this, 
maybe it takes place in a Parisian hotel late at night, the sun's setting, you hear the music to get you in the mood. It's like, je coupes ce gars, je robes ce And maybe it's a complicated storyline, like she can't get her window to open. She's like, oh, I do not know what's the problem. Is I cannot see the door. It's a window to open. That's so hot. Oh, oh so hot. Oh, oh. I just want to take my clothes off and throw it out the window. Let me call the maintenance man. <laughs> Pierre, he's so sexy. Then Pierre shows up, he's all French and honky. He's got like a thong on and a hammer. He's like, oh, ma chérie, what seems to be the problem? She's like, I do not know. I cannot seem to get the window to open up. <laughs> and it is so hot. Maybe you can open the window. Oh, my Charlie, I would fix this broken window and I would fix your broken heart. You're so beautiful. And they make love on the floor. It's all romantic. The credits come up. There's dancing like, je comprends ce cas, je comprends ce cas, je crois. It's nice. It's innocent. No, I saw like the hardcore version of this, this film and I'm still recovering. It's like, hey, I see that your window's a little busted. Let me fix that for you. Bam, 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 bam. You like that? Now you remember the film? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, poor girl, and he didn't even fix the window. <laughs> you guys have been awesome, thanks so much. Ladies Thank and you. gentlemen, let's give it up for Vanessa Hollingshead.